I'm Dr. Karen Lee Waddell, and I'm currently the director of the Australian SK Regional Centre, or the AusSRC. I've actually been learning how to commission telescopes, how to get early science from them, and that's really paving the way to the SKA, which will be one of the biggest telescopes in the world. And this telescope is going to help us answer a lot of big questions out there in the universe, like things such as how do galaxies form and evolve over time, and are we alone in the universe? The challenge about the SKA is that it's going to be producing enough data to fill about a million laptops in a, each year. And the thing is, if you're giving a million laptops to a scientist, it's going to be pretty hard to actually do the science with that. It's going to actually going to break your laptop if you're trying to process this data. And so instead, we're bringing the scientists to the data and we're making new ways of actually interacting with data, new frameworks, new tools, new methodologies to actually be able to do this and work with this scale of data. My name is Keith Bannister. I'm an astronomer at the CSIRO. I work on a really exciting part of astronomy called fast radio bursts. So these are bursts that last about a millisecond, put your fingers and they're gone. And uh, I use a telescope in Western Australia called ASCAP to find them and to find out which galaxy they came from. So to give you an idea, uh, if one happened at the location of the sun, you could be standing on Neptune and watching it with your popcorn and it would pop your popcorn in a millisecond. So it's like that powerful uh, a burst of radio waves. And so we don't really understand what kind of object can make them and how they can be so powerful. So that's the first question we're trying to answer. The great thing about radio astronomy and actually astronomy in Australia is that we're building all these brand new telescopes right here, right now, and they're ready just to be used and to do science with. So basically, I submitted my PhD thesis in Canada and hopped on a plane to work with CSIRO and the telescopes here. So I flew all the way from Canada to work with the telescopes that are right here in your backyard. And for the Australian SK Regional Centre, or AusSRC, the Australian government actually funded that $63 million for the next 10 years so we can actually establish and build up that project. And so I was fortunate enough to put in that proposal to be able to get all this funding. In Australia, we do really well at radio astronomy. We're very highly respected around the world. Um, we have world-class facilities here, so ASCAP is a one-of-a-kind facility around the world. It's absolutely, you know, top of the world in terms of what it can do on fast radio bursts and other types of science. We are just opening new frontiers. We're trying to understand the universe better. You know, practically, maybe that's just new knowledge, or maybe that will fundamentally change how humans see their place in the universe. There's a lot of support for scientists in Australia because we have all these networks. So we have the National Science Agency, which connects scientists from coast to coast, so we can work with everyone around here. And then there's also a lot of the universities that do a lot of research and really support researchers and producing the research that will let Australia shine. So one of the best things about my work would be the discovery aspect. Being able to explore the universe and see things that no one has seen before using some of the best telescopes in the world. So Australia is a great place to live and it has a lot of support from the government, the universities and everyone out there. But I think my advice to those coming here would be just to do it. I hopped on a plane and I came over and my career has shot up. So it's been really great.